Daryl Waltrip's Racing Weekly. Men and Speed Stick, like you, it never quits. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's show. And my heart is broken. I'm not, I might even break down and cry. This is our last show. Last show of the year. We're out of races. We're out of shows. And, you know, you'd think on the last show that all the people that help you put this thing together every week would be right here with you, right here kind of encouraging you and telling you what a great job you've done. Where's Burns? I mean, I still got to get the pool closed up. I had a lot of work I wanted to get done this weekend, and no Burns. So I get a phone call. I say, where's Burns? They say he's in Miami. What's he doing in Miami? He's working. Burns don't work. You've seen that. For if I had to find things for the man to do. There's a beach down there. He's on the beach, got his trunks on, and yeah, He's out there gaping somewhere. Let's see if we can find him. Who, me? At the beach? Good guess, D.W. Well, I mean, after all, I'm here to cover the 1995 NASCAR Bush Grand National Series banquet. We're going to have an interview with Johnny Benson just ahead, so, yeah, the beach. Folks, I was down here at the Homestead Motorsports Complex. What a tremendous job they've done. It's a great facility, and we saw some great racing. On Saturday, 18-year-old David Hutto, when all the smoke cleared, became the youngest NASCAR Series champion ever, just 18 years old. And on Sunday, a beautiful day, a huge crowd, estimated at 60,000, seemed like more. Boy, saw a great race. When it came down to the end, you had four cars going for the win. Hermes Sadler, Kenny Wallace, Larry Pearson, and Dale Jarrett laying back there in the bushes. And I think Dale made a smart move because Mayhem, the three of them get together in front. They go into the wall. Dale Jarrett skates on around for the white and caution flag, which means he won the very first Bush Grand National race down at Homestead. Well, I'm going to hang out at the beach for a while. You know, it's a good assignment. Let's go to Atlanta Motor Speedway where Matt Yoakum has all the latest news. Boy, some guys get all the good assignments, don't they? Well, let's try to carry on. We'll talk about the Winston Cup Championship. After 10 months and 30 races, Jeff Gordon enters, needing only a next-to-last-place finish or better to clinch the title. But the man in black, Dale Earnhardt, hasn't conceded the Winston Cup battle just yet. It's going to be tough. We're going to go out and try to win this race, and uh, that's all we can do. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, I think on his in his court. You know, it's just something we never thought could really happen, and we never really started to believe it could happen until about three weeks ago. And as soon as we started to believe it happened, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. So, you know, it's it's still unbelievable. And like I said, God willing, if we get it Sunday, I think it's going to take us a while to believe that we did get it. As an added insurance policy, Hendrick Motorsports has entered two extra cars for Jack Sprague and Jimmy Horton. Nobody falls out, and Dale Earnhardt's running up front. I mean, would there be a call that Jimmy to park the car? Hopefully not. You know, hopefully I can race it all day. You know, if if that's what we got to do to win the points for Rick, and you know, he, he deserves it, and so does Jeff and Ray. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be a team player. Lowe's Ford driver Brett Woodine is inching ever closer to the owner driver status. He says his deal with Junior Johnson is practically done. It looks like we're gonna come to some sort of an agreement. Uh, we're not sure exactly if it's a it's a full purchase, a partnership, or or what it might be, but. Uh, uh, there will be a, I'm sure there's going to be a change here at Junior Johnson and Associates. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd has filed two separate lawsuits against Felix Sabatis and Richard Carpentier. Rudd alleges Sabatis tried to lure Carpentier to Sabco. Rudd did, however, refuse on-camera comment. A few news and notes this week. Expect to hear Remington Firearms announce their logo will adorn the Butch Mock team next season. And Quality Care will announce Saturday night their new deal with Robert Yates Racing. And DW truck driver Tom McCrinnon took home the Mayflower Truck Challenge two weeks ago at Phoenix. He won it by 35 points. A few teams showed off some fresh paint this week. Rusty Wallace adds a splash of red, gold, and blue to his force, while the Wood Brothers added a little 007, helping to promote the new James Bond movie. Finally, while much of the attention is centered on Gordon Earnhardt, a number of battles are brewing a little further down in the standings. Don't be surprised if you see some swapping going on following Sunday's season finale. As we go to break, here are the current Winston Cup point standings. Hey, 
Carol, look. Caution's out on the beach. <laughs> Wish I could take a vacation in Miami. You know, go down, lay on the beach, lounge around, hang out with some racing people. I think it'd be a lot of fun, like Burns does. Burns, I got some Miami advice for you. Get a real job. You know, get real, Burns. This job is over with. What are you going to do now? Anyway, Johnny Benson is uh, Steve's guest this week. And, you know, if you look at his history, he won the Rookie of the Year in the championship the following year in ASA. He won the Rookie of the Year last year in the Bush Series and the championship this year. He's going to move into Winston Cup next year, and I don't see any serious challengers to his Rookie of the Year campaign. Does that mean we have a new Winston Cup champ in the making? DW, here we are in Miami with the 1995 NASCAR Bush Series champion Johnny Benson. And first of all, congratulations on a great season. You, Steve Bird, the entire team did a great job. Yeah, we sure did. They, we couldn't ask for a better year. The team really did a great job, and we had some good races and, you know, a couple of bad ones, but we can't complain at all. You know, Johnny, looking at the stats, I was amazed at the consistency. Something like 18 top 10 finishes. That, that really is testimony to what you guys have done. It's, it's unbelievable the valve to have, you know, 18 top 10 finishes or top fives or whatever, and all of them, it's just, it's unreal. I wish we could have won a couple more races, and I, and I believe we could have. You know, we were right there at a couple of the ends of a couple of races, and it just didn't happen. And, but, you know, out of the last 10 races of the year, we led, we led a bunch of laps. So, I, I tell you what, we were pretty strong second half of the season, and the guys did a great job. But I'm really looking forward to 96, and... It's going to be an interesting year, you know, I mean, they're, you're going up to where, you know, the best of the best are, and I, obviously it's going to take a little bit longer. The learning curve, I think, is going to be steeper than ever, and it has been steep for the last couple of years, but it's even going to be tougher, but it's, it's, that's what I like about the, the racing, you know. When I went to ASA, I was there for four years. Um, the learning curve was pretty steep there, and and that went pretty good and then you know now with the bush grand national it's learning curve was actually pretty steep there too and and but that's what i like though once we you know it's not that well we win the championship when we leave it, it's i like the new things and and to do new things and and next year's can be just so totally different even though we're going to a lot of the tracks that i've raced on but just um having new people to work with with bahari racing it's that's gonna be great and then racing against people um, never been against and a couple more tracks I've never been to it's gonna be interesting but you know we've got a three-year deal and and they're pretty excited about it because I know I sure am Johnny any uh, any special moments stick out in your mind uh, about the 95 season well, I, I think the whole season you know this the season was was just so great you know and that and that's what it's about is you're having your highs and your lows and and the whole deal so it's the championship is definitely you know what it's about and, and you can talk to any of the guys that's won the bush grand national championship and and they all say man you know it's just a it's just the best feeling you can have and and now that we have that feeling it's it's awesome we can't you can't describe the feeling it's great well congratulations you're a most deserving champion yeah thank you steve all right and uh, let's go back to what's his name in uh franklin yeah daryl waltrip that's it uh, it's, i think it's time to go to the beach big guy well, you know, I think Johnny Benson's timing is right for moving into Winston Cup racing, and I believe he'll do very well next year. Speaking of moving, you know, I wouldn't mind moving Burns out. Some, I don't know where I'm going to move him to. You know, you, fa you fans, you fans have made him believe that I'm hard on him. That's why he's laying on the beach down there in Miami. Just because he's had to take care of a few details around the shop, uh, brought me fresh milk, wash my truck, and a few other little odds and ends. I mean, I don't Get think that's it. asking too much of a guy that's supposed to be your helper, your producer. I mean, those are just normal jobs. I don't know about normal jobs, though. I don't think Burns has ever had a normal job. Just ahead, we'll have Ask Ted, and we'll have all the qualifying news from Atlanta. Well, welcome back, everyone. And uh, this week, our question for Ted is from Janet Lee Mitchner from Swanksville, Pennsylvania. And she wants to know what we do in that little bitty short period of time we call the off season. And of course, this is brought to you by all of our friends at Western Auto.
Well, Jenny, I'll tell you what. Before I answer your question, I want to let everybody know, yes, this is our last show of the season. Sorry, I'm just trying to do my best. But I'll tell you what, you guys have been just wonderful out there. The questions have been great. Well, maybe Daryl hasn't been so great, not to me at least. But, Jenny, I'll tell you what, the drivers do have a little time off. You know, our last race is there in Atlanta, and we don't pick up until February in Daytona. We do a little testing in February and in January, but the crews, them poor boys, I feel sorry for them. they got to build new cars for next year, new rules, new body changes. A lot of things happen. Them guys work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. How do you thank them, guys? It's hard to do. But I'll tell you what, I just want to thank you for watching, and hopefully next year we'll see you again. Wow, look at this. One more letter. It's from Karen Smith, and Karen, they chose our letter. I can't believe it. Do you and Mark Martin, Ted, have the same hairstylist? Karen, I know Daryl had to put you up to this. He had to ask that question. He's always fooling around. Ah, Ted's having a bad hair day. Not too bad today. A little windy. No, Mark and I don't have the same hairstylist. I'll tell you what, though. The drivers like to have short little hair like this, so when they're done racing, they could go like this, and it don't look too bad. Long hair, it just doesn't seem to be working right. It does for Kyle, but that's his image. Ted, when you have a unique hairstyle like that, everybody wants to know who does it. Right, Burns? Yeah, whatever you say, DW, don't stress me out and ask me questions like that when I'm at the beach. It's time for what racing means to me. This week we hear from Ricky Rudd. Gosh, that's a, that's a tough question. It's just, uh, it's just, it's your livelihood, I guess. I mean, it's your, you spend most every, all your uh, hours preparing, getting ready to go to races. After the race, getting regrouped, ready to go to the next race. Your whole life just sort of revolves around it. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm an associate producer. Hi, I'm Danielle, and I'm also an associate producer for Daryl Waltrip's Racing Weekly. Each week, you only get to see the best of the best of Daryl and Steve. But look at all these tapes. We have to go through these tapes every week, and these guys are not as slick as they think they are. And to prove that, here's a couple of highlights from 1995. We bring them all in town. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl. You're blowing it, buddy. Okay, good. Sure thing. 500 winner Sterling Marley, and he's going to tell us what racing means to him. Very good, very good, very good. Ah, we're just getting warmed up. Just ahead, we'll meet Jeff and Brooke. I started to say Brooke Shields. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, late breaking news and develops in Loudon, New Hampshire, with uh, Matt Yoakum, who's Dwight Yoakum's favorite. <laughs> That in-car camera really helped. I'm going to get that footage and study it. St steady it or something. <laughs> hey, welcome back, boys. Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. I slipped. <laughs> wow, well, that's ugly. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Folks, I'm still waiting on DW. He I can't, I can't talk. You know, Carol, I couldn't agree with you more. And if this dead gum mosquito or whatever is don't get off my nose. So until next week, good goodbye. <laughs> I am so well, I'm so disappointed. First of all, they told me they didn't keep all that stuff. I work so hard to be a professional. I want to be good at television. I want to have a good show. And then they show that. It's not my fault. It's Burns' fault. He's, he writes all this stuff. And then I am just disgusted. I'm going to Atlanta.
folks, it's a real privilege and honor for me to have as my special guest today, my good friend and uh, business partner and former car owner, Rick Hendrick. And uh, Rick, looks awful good for the Winston Cup Championship this year. Well, you know, I hope so, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to know these things. If you, if you tell me it's okay, I believe it. I believe that you got enough bullets in the gun here that we're going to be able to take care of everything. You know, I drove for this guy and... Uh, one of the nicest men that's ever been in Winston Cup racing. Rick, it's been a long, hard road. I mean, Hendrick Motorsports uh, didn't start out at the head table at the Waldorf, did it? No, no. no, you know, our first year I was surprised. We won three races and three poles with Bodine, and, and then we came back in 86 and won nine races, I guess it was, with Richmond, and then he got, you know, he died, and, uh, and then we kind of hit a slump, and then you came on, and we won, you won five races, and when you were well, six. When you, including Daytona. When you win that many races in a year, you're supposed to win a championship. Now, I want you to tell me what happened that year. I don't really know. We finished fourth, at best I remember. But, uh, you know, how many times you won Daytona? Won Daytona twice. Twice. Uh, Bodine and, uh, and then myself. And uh, let me ask you something. When you were looking around, and uh, I know that Jeff Gordon certainly had star written all over him, but how did you know? What was the key to, to picking him out and making the effort you had to do to get him in the car? Well, you know, it was right here at this track on a Saturday bush race. And I'd heard of Jeff, but I didn't know Jeff. And uh, I never go to the condos, and I'm never here on Saturday. And I walked through the tunnel and went to the condos of the suites over there. And these cars went in the first turn down here, and this white car was smoking the tires. And I said, you watch this guy. He's going to wreck. And uh, I stood there to watch a wreck, and uh, he took the lead in the bush race and was really running well, and I said, who is that guy, you know, and uh, I said, that's that kid, Jeff Gordon, and, uh, you know, he drives Ford, and, and I told Jimmy Johnson, I said, you know, it's a shame he's got a contract, and uh, in his office that day, uh, you know, one, one of his roommates worked for us, he walked through the, Andy Graves walked through the, the uh, Jimmy's office and said, he doesn't have a contract. So uh, he had one that afternoon. So it was just, maybe it was meant to be. And, uh, you know, I believe that and uh, thankful that it happened. And, it, you know, it's just one of those twists of fate that, that we were at the right place at the right time. Well, folks, this guy right here, he's, he's paid his dues, believe me. I know everybody thinks he's had it easy, but he hadn't. He started at very humble beginnings, and uh, the success he's had, he's worked very hard for. I, for one, am excited to walk into the Waldorf and see him sitting at the head table in just a few weeks. I know you will be too, Rick. Glad, thank you for being on the show. Let's check in with our Men in Speed Stick qualifying report. Starting 25th is Loy Allen. In row 12, it's Derek Cope alongside Gary Bradbury. In row 11, John Andretti will take the green next to Bobby Labonte. In row 10, Brett Bodine starts next to Jeff Burton. In row 9, it's Sterling Marlin alongside Ted Musgrave. In row 8, Jeff Bodine will start next to Bill Elliott. And in row 7, Hutch Strickland will start next to Rick Mast. In row six, it's Terry Labonte against the man in black, Dale Earnhardt. And row five has Ricky Craven starting next to Mark Martin. In row four, Jeff Gordon will start alongside Michael Waltrip. Row three has Rusty Wallace starting sixth alongside Jeremy Mayfield. In row two, Dick Trickle will start alongside Bobby Hamilton. And on the outside pole, Ricky Rudd. And folks, a big surprise for the first time in 1995, our hero, Darrell Waltrip, is on the pole with the Western Auto Chevrolet. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking to see who, uh, let's see, there's Ricky Craven, there's uh, Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd. <laughs> Guess what, Burns? DW's on the pole, Burns. Can you believe it after all this time? I told you if you stuck, did I tell you if you stuck with me, I'd make a star out of you? Well, if you stick with me, Burns, I'll make a bigger star out of you. Hey, guess what? I've had a great time doing this show this year, and I hate it's got to come to an end. It's our last show, as I told you before, but do me a favor, will you? Call at 1-900-737-2378. Now, that's voting for NASCAR's most popular driver. It's a 900 number. Costs you 99 cents. you got to have a touch-tone phone to do it, but if you do that, Call in and vote for ODW, would you? 
900-737-2378. Punch 17 and 1, and we'll see what happens. Maybe, I, maybe winning the poll today is just the start of a whole bunch of good things. Anyway, it's been a great year. I want to thank all my guests that have been on the show all year long, all the great people that have worked on the show, putting it together, Anna and Danielle and uh, Burns and Matt and everybody behind the scenes. Thanks for a great year. Look forward to doing this show again next year. Uh, it'll be bigger and it'll be better. We may even call it the big show. Who knows? Until next year, God bless and Godspeed. Darrell Waltrip's Racing Weekly has been presented by Men and Speed Stick. Like you, it never quits. And by Western Auto, the official auto parts and service store of NASCAR. Look at me, I'm down here in my rent uniform. I've been working my guts out all day. And guess what, buddy? I'm on the pole. I love you, man. I love you. Don't try to take my pole.